Okay, so time for picado lesson number two. So picado being the technique that uses the index and middle fingers playing rest strokes. <laughs> playing alternately rest strokes and used to play the scale, scale passages in flamenco music. So it can be done sometimes with tirando technique. But to bring it out, most of the scales to bring out the sound more is... So just to recap from the Picado lesson number one, I was talking about the hand, the right hand fundamentals. So it's just basically the thumb resting on the sixth string and lifting up the hand first till the it's just above the strings in the way that you would pick up a bag or heavy-ish bag. Thumb on the sixth string and fingers just hanging in a very relaxed, natural way. The thumb, if you've got a low action like you should have on a flamenco guitar, then your thumb can touch here, the top and the string as well. So it's easy to just to find that position. It's not precious or anything. Any particular part of the thumb on the string is just there. So quite easy to find that. And then the other main point here was the knuckle, the middle knuckle and the fingertip are roughly the same level off the ground. And then we're hinging from this big joint move the finger, if I'm just focusing on the middle finger here, I'll leave the index on say the third string, just to get it out of the way. And then the middle finger is hinging from here, lifting out, not opening out like this, but just this, keeping the same shape. And then playing down onto the fingertip, for the fingertip at that um, angle will be naturally just falling onto the string. And then the end, you continue pushing down and then the end of the finger gives way and then that forces the finger this part of the finger to go across into the string behind as well. so the wrong sort of pushing too early or without flexing too much could cause this knuckle to spring out sort of like this and also a pulling so i said no pushing or pulling on the last video so the pulling would be finger on the string and then a sort of a secondary movement across purposely done which if you just play down from here then that's uh, automatically done just by the fact that the end collapses and then you relax the finger once it's made contact with the string behind so that's the basic idea the other thing is that these fingers the third finger a finger and the little finger can better not to be tucked too much into the hand like this well some players do that quite effectively but majority keep these fingers out of the way because it's it's a bit limiting can limit the speed this creates a bit more freedom in the two fingers so so the idea is to play alternate fingers with the same intensity um, a good exercise to do to try and get that is just to play one finger at a time for a few notes so find that the if you put the index finger on the second string and play the middle finger. Now the idea is it's not to play this too fast, it would just be a strike, let's say five times. So practicing one is just to get the intensity the same on each one and you just focus on one at a time. So if, if you're playing a slow picado, would you even need to use two fingers? But the idea is that when you obviously when you play with two you're playing reactively so it's going to be more than twice the speed so if you think of if you're playing with one you don't want to try and do too fast because it's not really about the speed at this point but you will be able to play faster than double the speed of one finger because of the reactivity between the two fingers so it doesn't mean just because this is the fastest you could play with one finger that it would be double that because there's reactivity creates more speed so but we'll start with just the middle finger so keep the index finger on the second string and play the middle finger so one two three four five and at the end of that leave the middle finger on the second string and then bring the index into play so Then leave the index on and then do four with the middle. 
then four with the index, three with the middle, three with the index, two with the middle, two with the index. So now when we come to one of each, that's what we're going to just keep going and that will be alternate fingers then, it'd be middle index, middle index, but with this is when we want to really concentrate on the separation of the fingers. So as you strike down with the middle finger, lift the index in accordance. So what I normally notice with students is the index finger is quite lazy, so we get used to that finger as being um, a very, a well it's quite strong for some things, but when we push buttons and things like that we get instant results. But on the guitar, it can be a bit <clears throat> can be a bit lazy. So you often see a more natural thrust with the middle, and then the index just sort of lifts up a little bit, and it's an imbalance. So to get the it's important to get the coordination in the hand itself before starting to coordinate with the left hand, because it's not all just about coordinating the right hand, and left hand. It's coordinating the right hand within itself. So that would be as you play the middle down, try and lift the index up with the same. So it's an exact switch. So you feel the upward reaction to reaction exactly the same. I'll try and show that from. So the idea is to move fairly large movements. I don't favour playing too close to the strings because I think that should be a natural result of playing slowly first with a bigger movement and then as it gets more relaxed and faster each time you go a bit faster you relax the fingers a bit just let them play a bit more relaxed and as they get faster you just relax and you end up with a resultant small movement anyway So some people teach the idea of preparing a finger, planting the finger before playing the next note. So that would be like, which on some strings, on some notes would have a staccato effect, which is blocking the string that you're gonna play with the next finger. But I don't think it's done for the reason of the staccato sound, even though the picado technique signifies the word itself means sort of cut or chopped so it's like a cut note so but that's easy to if you're playing something slow and you hear that sound it's quite easy to copy that sound you just naturally block but to practice the staccato the blocking of the string to prepare the finger because it's a more efficient movement I'm not completely convinced by that because also if you're playing a scale and you're preparing the finger like that, that means it's going to be more difficult to improvise then because you can't really prepare everything when you're improvising. So because Picardo is played from sort of above the strings down onto the strings, that means you're free to pick out strings almost at will. So you could be playing second string and at any time. So I think sometimes the argument for preparing the finger is to not let the finger come out too far like this, but um, I favour the gear system, I call it a gear system, where you keep the finger in the same shape, so like gears, you'd have gear wheels, different sizes, but the same shape. <coughs> so we're having a different distance here, but the fingers remain in the same shape. So then naturally... When you play fast, that's not a control small movement. That small movement is just a result of relaxing. So slow practice, I always think, is better to play bigger. And then as you relax, you, it allows you to get fast. And then when you play slowly, it's a more relaxed version of the fast playing. It's not actually the slow practice necessarily. So if I was playing something slowly, I might do much more close movement because I'm just keeping the fingers relaxed. So the slow practice would be...
else there would be. And if I played that slowly but relaxed, it's just that as a, an, an actual piece, it probably... So it's just a more relaxed version of the fast playing, but the slow practice is what allows you to get to the fast playing. So there's always a slight exaggeration, quite a bit of an exaggeration actually in the slow practice. So what we're doing at the moment is like slow practice really, so... I'm going to play that exercise through again, so start with the middle finger five times. Index five times. Three, two, and then when we get to one, a nice big. So be really careful that you're not doing this big movement with the middle and not so big with the index. That wouldn't be coordinated, it's... So you might have to make a bit more of an effort with the index finger lifting this way. It's like a counter movement, an exact counter. Then you can go back to the one finger. Make sure not to do this too fast, because if you do one finger too fast, you will end up getting tension. This is like doing anything repetitive with just one. It needs a reactivity. So I would say this is a reasonable speed to do the exercise. So that's a safe speed. And then when you get to the... Don't get tempted to try and go too fast or anything. Just work on the separation. And then later, later lessons, I'll be talking about um, how to increase the speed. I think probably the next lesson, I'll be talking about um, going from a higher string. I want to focus now on just one string. It's just about getting the evenness. And then we'll be talking about going from high string to lower strings and how the arm and hand and thumb operates when doing that, those movements. So it'll be string crossing like. Eventually we'll get on to coordinating the right hand with the left hand. So slowly, slowly. I hope you find this video useful. Uh, thanks for watching and hasta pronto. Cheers.